Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about my book review of Richard Wright's novel, Native Son. This was a really great book. I think it's an important book. I think everybody who's watching this, particularly if your skin is the same color as mine, uh, you should probably read this book. Uh, it was very enlightening to me. This story is about Bigger Thomas, who is a young man living in Chicago, who lives with his mother and his younger brother and sister in a one-room tenement house, uh, apartment, really. Um, and Bigger's family is a part of the social welf welfare system, and they are actually going to be taken off of the welfare rolls. So they are no longer going to be given that kind of support when the novel begins. And Bigger's mother wants Bigger to get a job, which is being offered to him from this social services uh, organization. And so that will ensure that they have some money to live and to eat, um, and so they won't be starving to death, um, which is extremely telling right there in the beginning. So Bigger is the kind of person who, he kind of wants to be, I want to say, like, a bad boy. He, he, want, he sort of hangs out with this group of three young men, and they do, like, petty crimes and whatever. But Bigger specifically points out the fact that they do these petty crimes against um, other African Americans. They, they don't do them against the white people in their community because they say that the white people don't care if the black people commit crimes against one another, which is also very telling. Now this story takes place in the 1930s um, in Chicago, so that's a northern city, right? Uh, keep that in mind. So they do these, you know, they do these things. They hang out, they do petty crimes. Bigger is kind of the, this bully kind of person. Um, he sort of overpowers his friends even. He um, acts like a, a meanie a lot of the time. He, he acts that way toward his family as well. But when you, when you get into the story, you come to understand why that is. So... Bigger is pretty much shiftless at this point, uh, and, but he is planning to go to this job interview uh, because he doesn't really want his family to starve, obviously. So he goes to it, but before he does, he's in a movie theater with his friend Jack. I think it's Jack that's in the theater with him. And they watch this, uh, it's like a newsreel sort of thing that they used to do before the film actually started, where it showed uh, this young girl named Mary Dalton uh, sort of cavorting with her boyfriend in Florida, and it makes a big deal out of the fact that she's very wealthy. And come to find out, this is the daughter of the gentleman that Bigger is going to be interviewing with. So Bigger goes to the interview, and he actually gets the job from the Dalton family to be their uh, driver, and also to stoke their furnace. They offer him $20 a week, which will sustain his family, but also they offer him money on, t on top of it. And I guess the big thing with this family is that they're supposed to be philanthropists, right? The, the Daltons, particularly Mr. Dalton, likes to help out young black men to give them jobs and opportunities. Um, and Mrs. Dalton, who is blind, um, is really big on education, and she wants to see Bigger, you know, uh, go further in his education. He only has an eighth grade education. Um, but you come to find out later in the book that these things are not really, um, they're not really as helpful as the Dalton family would like for them to be, I guess. Um, so Bigger gets this job. And he finds that Mary Dalton lives in this house, and he's seen her, and he immediately does not like her, and he immediately actually doesn't really like the family. Um, Mary Dalton uh, says to him something about, um, you know, do you believe in unions? Do you think you should join a union? And this is a communist era during American history, where everybody was like against communism in the country, and Mary has communist sympathies. In fact, she's dating a boy named Jan, who is a member of the Communist Party openly. And her parents know that she hangs out with him and they don't like it, um, but she doesn't care. She's sort of a bad girl type. And the first day on Bigger's job, she asks him to bring her to university where she's going to school. But on the way there, she tells him to detour and he, she doesn't in fact intend to go to school. Instead, she takes him to meet Jan and 
who gives him all these, you know, pamphlets about communism and all this other stuff. Um, but she and Jan are very familiar with uh, Bigger. They they get really close to him. They act like they're best friends. Like um, they want him to come into this uh, diner. They say, "Take us to your neighborhood and take us to a diner," and he does. And they. Uh, they want him to sit with them. They want him to sit in the front seat with them. They want to share everything with him. Um, and it's just too close for Bigger. Um, and he doesn't like that because in his world, this is a segregationist society. Um, it's the North in Chicago, remember. Um, and it's it's still like that. It's, it's segregated. Bigger doesn't really know anything about white people, and he knows that they don't know anything about him and his family and where he comes from, and it's just very outside of his comfort zone. He's very afraid that he's going to do something wrong and something is going to happen to him because of them, because they are being way too familiar. And he's worried that somebody will think that he is doing something wrong and punish him for it. So this whole thing is outside of his comfort zone, right? And he finds that he really dislikes them for doing this to him. What he feels like they're inflicting on him, right? Um, so fast forward to the end of this day. Uh, the three of them get kind of drunk. Mary gets very drunk. Jan uh, takes off and Bigger takes Mary back home. So the next day she's intending to leave for Detroit. And Bigger is supposed to take her trunk to the train station. Um, and leave it there and she will pick it up when she when he brings her there um, the next day however he finds he has to lift her up the stairs and get her in her room because she's so drunk and when he does he finds that there's sort of a um, he's a young man right uh, not that this is right or in any way okay but he thinks that he can maybe take some liberties um, they kiss each other or he kisses her and you know, he's in a position in her room with her where she's kind of unconscious and he thinks he can maybe do something. Um, however, the blind mother, Mrs. Dalton, comes in and Bigger is terrified that he's going to be caught in there. And, you know, this is a black man in the 1930s in a segregated society, marries a white girl, uh, sort of unconscious, kind of, not really, but almost in her bed. And if he's caught there, it's going to lead to no good. He knows it. So he puts a pillow over her face to keep her quiet because the mother can't hear uh, him in the room or see him, obviously, because she's blind. And so uh, Mary starts to sort of freak out in the bed or like try to mumble or make noise and he's pushing the pillow down on her. So uh, he ends up killing her, right? He smothers her. And then the story goes from there where he works to uh, cover this thing up that he's done this um, because he knows that it will mean the, the end of him. Um, and then, so he thinks maybe beforehand, he plans with his girlfriend, Bessie, that he could maybe make it seem like Mary got kidnapped um, and that he could get some ransom money, like $10,000, which would make his life so much better, right? Uh, Bessie doesn't want to do this, but um, Bigger is a bully, basically, and forces her to do it. Uh, to go through with this plan. But after he kills her, he gets nervous that he's not going to be able to do this thing, actually. That um, there's worse things to come for him. He tries to cover up this crime um, in a horrible, horrific way where he ends up burning Mary's body in the furnace. And um, then he actually does bring the ransom note to the residence. And the father initially thinks that she's been kidnapped and, you know, they plan to pay off uh, the kidnappers. However, a bunch of policemen and a bunch of newspaper people are over at the Dalton's house covering the story, investigating, looking into all this. Uh, Bigger is questioned about this. He points the finger at Jan, saying that Jan is the one who does it because communism is a big, really bad thing at this time in history. And they think that they're going to, he thinks they're going to take this line and, and go after Jan and not believe him when he says he didn't do it. However, they don't think that Jan really did it. Um, and then when they're in the basement, some serious events happens. Mary's body is actually discovered in the furnace, all burnt up. It's just bones. Um, and Bigger freaks out and he flees. And when he does so, they immediately know that something's up with him. So they put the hunt out for him in the city. 
Now, in this city, Bigger is living in the segregated uh, tenement buildings where African Americans are all clustered together. Basically, the black people in this area in Chicago are very limited. They can't do whatever they want to do. They can't go wherever they want to go. They can't get certain jobs. They have no place. They have no like um, opportunities for advancement in their lives, despite all of the philanthropy that these white people think that they're doing. They themselves are working to keep the African Americans segregated and separate. And this is why Bigger, it turns out, has done this thing, because he cannot really fully realize his own individual self, which has breeded a lot of hate in him and a lot of fear and resentment because he's so oppressed and because his his um, family and the people in his community are so oppressed. There are no opportunities, even though people want them to be educated or try to work for their education. They want to give them opportunities, yet when they have the skills and the abilities, nobody will hire them and there's nowhere for them to go, really. Bigger has these dreams of being an aviator, um, maybe in the military, but he knows that, well, when he was little, he thought that could happen. Then he grew up and realized there's no opportunity for him to be able to do that. It's not going to happen. And so he's got all this anger and all this rage built up from the oppression. And he's also afraid. Um, he's afraid for his life all of the time. And this combination of oppression and fear and anger, uh, it has nowhere to go. So it's going to explode in some way. Um, and that's basically what has happened. And so this book is really talking about that. It's exploring the ways in which the white culture so oppresses the black culture, specifically during this time, um, but even now. And that's the opportunities are just not there. And what do you do? Like, and this back quote really says, men can starve from a lack of self realization as much as they can from a lack of bread. And this book really explores that whole idea that when a person is not able to realize their full potential and their full self, because they are just thwarted at every turn, um, that's going to breed hate and anger and just going to make things continually worse. It's this vicious cycle that's going to be perpetuated. Um, and I mean, it's so obvious when you are told that, that this is happening. But so eventually, Bigger, he tells Bessie he's done this thing. And she, you know, he's kind of forcing her to go along with him to, you know, run away from it. And she doesn't want to. And eventually he kills her because he doesn't want her to say anything. And so, you know, it's this, again, it's one thing leading to another um, and this fear that is bred within him. But it's not only the fear, it's um, it's this um, guilt that uh, Richard Wright is saying that white people in this culture have about the oppression that they're perpetuating. I don't know that I buy that um, as an excuse, but he says that there's this white guilt and there's this guilt fear on both sides, which uh, is leading to all of these terrible things. Bigger eventually gets caught and he's, you know, um, he's killed. And he knew that was going to happen right from the start. And the interesting thing about that was the people interrogating him kept saying, um, did you rape her? Uh, you must have done that. You did it. You know you did. Just admit it. And he did not. But they, they firmly have it in their brains that he did that. Um, and they seem to really focus on that. And so it really, this book... I think is essential for a person, for a white person specifically, to read, to understand what that whole situation is about, the, the whole lack of self-realization and what that leads to. Um, yeah, I thought it was a really great book. I gave it four stars. There were some things about it that dragged it down for me, namely that I've had this issue with other books where there's just too much usage of people's names when they're talking to each other. Um, that's just not natural speech. And it just is, it just really gets in the way for me. Like when we talk to one another, we don't say each other's names all the time. And they do in this book, like constantly. And that just drives me nuts. Um, and also I just felt like some of the dialogue was just a little too simple for me, um, a little too redundant and repetitive. Um, but the essential story is actually extremely enlightening for me. I'm so glad I read it. It was really good. Um, I thought it clipped along really well. I was really interested, really invested in what was going to happen. And just ultimately, I think it's a message that we all need to keep in mind, especially today, 
uh, with the state of the world and race relations and all of this nonsense that's happening. Um, yeah, so that's my review of Native Son by Richard Wright. It's a spoiler review because I really think it's important that people understand because if you aren't going to pick up this book, I want you to know what the story is and what it's about and what happens. Um, because it's really sad. It's really sad that this is a thing that happened in the past a long, a, a, all the time and that it's things that people still do and the society that we live in still perpetuates these uh, ideas and these customs as they call it in the book. Um, and I think that if more people would read a book like this, uh, maybe those things would would stop happening or at least happen far less than they do. So it's a definitely an important book. I'm very glad I read it and I hope you will pick it up as well. So that's my review of Native Son by Richard Wright. Please let me know in the comments below if you've read it or if you're interested in reading it, what you thought about it, what you think about the whole concept of this idea. I'd be really interested to hear your thoughts as well. So I hope you liked the video. Give me a thumbs up if you did and subscribe to my channel, of course. I truly appreciate it. And I'll see you back here on Thursday when I do my review of my Killer Reads book club book, Gone Girl, and I'll announce the next book for March for that book club. So I'll see you back here then. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.